Hi, everyone, and welcome to Canvas for Elementary. I'm super excited to introduce this brand new platform because I think it's really going to be great for teachers, for students, and for families. This particular video is the intermediate to advanced users video. So I'm going to kind of fly through the different features and then let it be a little bit of an explore on your own. If you wish to have a more in-depth tutorial, please look for the beginner to intermediate tutorial on Canvas for Elementary. All right, so here we go. I tried to recreate my environment in Canvas to look what I think yours is going to look like. Now, just know that we're kind of learning together on this. So, um, so if you find some things, please let me know because there's probably things that I don't know about this yet either. All right, so. Um, a couple of things I want to bring to your attention. First of all, this is your new dashboard look. And so when you come out here and open up Canvas, this is what you are going to see. Now, the first reaction might be what happened to all of my other content that I had in Canvas. The other reaction might be, oh my gosh, this is really different. How do I do this? So let's go through a couple of things. First of all, on the global navigation bar on the far left, you will notice instead of dashboard, it now says home and you're going to use this home button a lot more instead of um, using this as just a dashboard this home button is going to be your way to get back to this view which really is your home view for your students so they're going to want to use this view quite a bit if you are wondering what happened to everything else that you have in canvas and why it is no longer here if you click down on subjects which use which in the classic view is considered courses now in the Canvas for Elementary, to make the language a little more user friendly um, for our elementary students, they are subjects. If you go ahead and click on your subjects and you're going to click on all subjects, um, just like it used to be all courses, here's where everything is that you may have wondered what happened to all of my all of my courses and how do I get them back. So just come through here, find what you're looking for, and you're going to go ahead and star it. And once you have started, now when you go back home, you will notice that this class is now going to appear um, back here. It might appear under unpublished if it was unpublished. In this case, you're going to notice it here. And so now when I go to open this, you are going to notice that this has the classic view. And that is because this particular course or subject was created in the class under a classic sub account. So depending on what you open and where it was created is going to be how you're going to view it. So that's that's just kind of a little bit of an important distinction to make. Um, so just so I can try and um, make sure to clear up any misunderstandings that might happen with this. It's really about the way you view things is how Canvas for Elementary is going to work. It changes the forward view. It doesn't change anything behind the scenes. And so if a class was created like um, like I will create my um, my district professional development courses, I will create that in a different sub account that has the classic or traditional views to it because all of our secondary is still using that classic view. They don't have access to this elementary view. So I'm gonna create it there, but it doesn't matter who you are, or what platform you use, you're, everybody's gonna view it the same. Now, under if I create something under my sub account where I have enabled the features for the Canvas for Elementary, that course is going to look different. So this is one that I created under the Canvas for Elementary. And now you notice when you open this course up, or subject, as we call it for our elementary, now it looks different because it was created under that different sub account, which has these features enabled. So just kind of two important, I think, distinctions to make as we begin our, um, our work through this process. So again, I'm gonna go back to home. Um, this is gonna become the way you're gonna wanna help students navigate is just find home, go back home. It used to be home over here on the left hand column when it used to be your course um, your course navigation bar you would click home there now you just want to click home over here this will take you back to your dashboard which is really for our students now going to be that home page so it's one last click to get where they need to get to all right so let's go ahead and get started in what you need to do to get this set up 
So when we're here at home, I just have my subjects. I don't have my home course set yet. Now, I think, and I'm hoping without um, having an SIS integrated class to work with here to show you, I think you're going to see um, a course tile that is going to be um, your SIS course that has all of your students in it. So I'm hoping that's the one that is here for you. You're going to go ahead and open that up. And once you open that up, you're going to see this manage subject that is going to take you into the background. So let's go ahead and click on manage subject. And now this should look very familiar. So this is all of the back work that used to be associated with your course. It's still there. It still will look the same when you go into the back side. It's just the front side that will look a little bit different. A couple of things you're going to want to do. The very first thing, let's scroll near the bottom. You are going to see a, now, a setting that says enable as homeroom course. You're going to want to take that SIS course. You're going to want to enable that as your homeroom course and then go ahead and update your course details. Now, once you enable this course as your homeroom course, your homeroom has very limited features because its purpose is to really serve as that forward facing class where students can see an announcement and pretty much that's about it. It's just kind of that main place that's a landing place. A couple of things you're going to want to change. You're going to want to change your card image. Again, this is this is not any different than it has been before. However, your banner page, when you whenever you're um, into an elementary course now, you're going to have a banner page, which is a wide image. And so using the same card image down here on the banner page um, was distorting the image. So they created two separate ones for you. So now you can go in and choose your images like normal. Just know that you're going to want to have um, this one be a five to one aspect. So you're going to want to crop it so that it's, it's not that traditional um, rectangle shape. It's a much longer extended rectangle shape. Okay, choose your color, whatever. Another thing I want to draw to your attention is that the name of your course is going to be probably that SIS name and the course code. That caused a lot of grief in the past. Now they have made it so you can add in a friendly name. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Mrs. Hermes class. And that is going to be what everybody sees now when they see your course tile. So instead of seeing that, that um, ugly kind of back end uh, information from SIS, now is going to be um, your name or however you want to call that. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. And so, so I would encourage you to spend some time, go through here and change some of these settings. Notice that you don't have the traditional um, bars across the top here because this course is, this isn't a course, this is a landing spot. Let's go ahead and go back home. And as soon as I go back home, you're going to notice some things have changed now on my dashboard. And it takes a second for it to, yep, <laughs> it takes a second for it to update. But now what you're going to notice is now I have that new name that I gave my class. So now I have the new name here. And now I have the option to add an announcement. That's what you're going to want to use this landing place for. So think about some ways that you could use that announcement feature as your students log into Canvas. That is now going to be the first thing they see. So a couple thoughts. I'll, I'll just share these with you. I, they may or may not make sense. But um, if you put a daily video in here, and let's say that school's about to begin, your students are coming in, you're in the hallway, you're welcoming them into your classroom, depending on what bus they're in, what's going on, they may trickle in it, they may trickle into your class at different times, they may come all at once, but we're trying to set up that welcoming environment for students by greeting them at the door. So you're out there greeting students at the door, they can come into class, log into Canvas, and that's just like you get them into that routine. That's the first thing you do. Come into class, drop your stuff off, grab a Chromebook, log into Canvas. Once you're logged into Canvas, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and start playing my video. And you can do all sorts of things with this video. So welcome them for the day. Give them a couple of things to do. You could have them um, go ahead and go mark your attendance. Go ahead and go mark your lunch count. Um, maybe some of those basic things that you want to get them in the habit of doing. You can have that be part of your announcement and then get them started on a on a entry task. 
um, whatever that looks like for you in your classroom. There's a lot of great things that you can do right here with this announcement feature. And so that would give you time while they're, um, they're engaged in, in meaningful work from the moment they walk in the door, you're out there greeting students, you have some time to come into class, you can take your attendance, you can put your lunch count through, you can do um, some individual student check-ins that need maybe more than they got at the door while you know your whole class is engaged in, in this activity that you have already set for them. So just a strategy, I'm sure there's lots of other ones out there as well, um, but that can happen all right here through your homeroom course with that announcement tool. Okay, so setting that homeroom course, that's number one super important task that you need to do. Now that you've set up your homeroom, um, let's go ahead and look at setting up some subjects. So we're gonna go ahead and start a new subject. Now, a couple of thoughts here. You could have the traditional math, science reading, but some other things I was thinking about is, wouldn't it be cool if you're doing an, a unit of study that you could add a subject with your unit of study. So I'm gonna go ahead, what account do you want this associated with? Super important, you want this to be the C for E pilot. So make sure that you're selecting that because that's what's gonna create the right format for this class. Um, sync enrollments, this means every student who's part of your homeroom class is going to be automatically enrolled into this class. So it makes it really super easy. Um, and then make sure that you have your homeroom class selected. So you're going to go ahead and click on. Now, I have a couple of different ones out there. Mine is actually called this test course. I need to make sure I select the right homeroom. You probably will only have the one, which is going to be your SIS number and name in there. And then what do you want to entitle this? So let's say we're studying insects. And I want to create actually a unit here where I want everything to fall into the unit. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my subject and it automatically brings me up to my settings so I can go through and do all of those things in my settings that I want to do. When I'm done, if I want to go back just to this subject, I can click this back button. If I want to go back to my, um, my home view, I would click the home button. Let's go back to my subject. Now, because we created this in our elementary environment, notice how this looks different than the class used to look. And that's because it, it just has that new look to it. So let's walk through what that is really quickly. Again, this is that, um, that wide banner I was talking about where you can change that in your, um, in your settings, which is right here. Click on Manage Subject, and that's where all that information is. Um, I will show you in a minute how we can get rid of the grades if you don't want the grades here. But again, you have all of these same tabs for students. Those are gonna show up under each of their subjects as it did on their main homepage, which is gonna be your homeroom page. Once you're in this subject, if you want to set up an announcement in here, you can create an announcement in here. This is also where your students now will have access to modules. Now, if we click on modules, this goes back to the same information that you have before, right? So this is the back end. It's just that you work through it a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a module. I can start adding my module in here. Once I've added my module, let's go ahead and do this so I can just show you really quickly. So, um, so this is going to be, I'm just gonna call this insects again, maybe insects um, week one or however you want to, however you want to label your modules. I'm gonna go ahead and add my module and now I have the same features as before. I can choose files. I can add different things in here. So if I have a file on my computer, if I want to drag and drop things, I can do that all from right here. Or I can, sorry, I've got a small screen and I got my picture going on here. <laughs> I can come up here and notice this looks just like the modules did um, on the classic view only now we just have a few different features. I click here, this looks identical, right? So it still has all of the same features just located in a little different place that's hopefully a little bit easier to access. Now, one thing I wanna share with you is that you still have the same exact features you did before. So if you want to add content in from another class that you created before, you can import that content right into this class even if it was created under that classic view. You can still go to the backside and everything is exactly the same. So um, again, in this particular video, I'm not gonna really go over more than that um, 
because because I'm assuming that you'll be able to go in and play around with this and figure that part out. If you want more details, watch the other video. All right, now your resource tab over here. Again, this is um, this is going to be all of the resources that used to be in that classroom navigation bar over here on the left. Now they're over here. So so that's just um, maybe a different way of accessing that information. All right, you still have your student view button. So if you want to see what does this look like for a student, you can click on that and you can you can get your student view in. Let me adjust my picture. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and leave my student view. And then again, if I want to go back into where all of those um, settings and features are, I'm going to go ahead and go back to manage my subject. And this is where I want to show you if you want to get rid of the grades, you're going to go over to the navigation bar. And this is what it used to be before. Remember, we had the drag and drop. If I drag my grades feature down out of here, now that feature will not show up for students when, when they um, are looking at my subject. Now, I want to, oops, I clicked the wrong button when I was trying to click on that. Save, I accidentally clicked on my stop share. So here we are back again. Okay, so as I scroll down to the bottom, just want to make sure that you are saving this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this information. And then when I go back to my subject, now you'll notice that grades is no longer there. And so that's how you can get rid of that grades tab. Now, if I go back home and when I go back to my overall home, I still am going to see grades here. And that's because somewhere along the way, one of my subjects, I forgot to take the grades out. So if I was a student and I looked at grades, I'm going to see here are the different grades that I have for my different classes. The reason that's here is because, again, I didn't take them away from one of my subjects. So it's going to be important that you, um, when you're setting up your subjects, that you make sure you're going to do that for every single one of the subjects that you create. And then that feature will no longer be there. However, let's say you had math, social studies, and second step here, and you wanted them to be able to see the grades for math, but not the other ones, then if you disable those for the other subjects, when they click here, they will only see the math one and they won't see everything else. So I, I hope that I hope that kind of clarifies that just a little bit. And then we're going to go back to our homeroom. Now, again, on our schedule, if you click on the schedule, what's going to happen is once you set an assignment with a due date, that assignment is going to show up whatever the due date was. So when you're planning your assignments in Canvas, making sure you put that due date will then populate that information in the calendar. If you don't have a due date, it won't show up here on the calendar. So um, so that's, that's a really important detail, especially for parents if they want to come in and see what's due. If they don't see due dates on things, then they're going to maybe assume that their kid had everything done. Um, also, what happens is once you have created an assignment here, there's going to be a little checkbox. And so it will, if a student submits the assignment, it will automatically check that off for the day. It won't take it away from what happened on that day. It will just automatically check it. So a parent can still look and see, okay, these were the five things that were due today and four out of the five of them are checked. So I have a stu my student still needs to do one other item. Now, um, just a side note to that, if you have, um, if you have a, created an assignment and they're turning it in by paper, so on this submission, you put, you know, no submission required. It's still going to show up on here and it will still have the checkbox. The student will have to go in and check that box themselves on those particular assignments to show that it was completed. OK, a couple more things I want to share with you and then I'm going to turn you loose. So let's go ahead and go back to my home page and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on my insects course. Now, once I have done this, I'm going to go ahead and go out to manage because this is something that is probably going to not be as easy to remember to do. We have to make sure and publish this. If we don't publish it, then our students aren't going to see it. It won't show up as a tile or a subject um, when they when they go into their course. So if they say, I don't see that, it's probably because um, 
it hadn't been published yet. So make sure that you go in and, and do that publish piece. All right. So I have done that. I'm going to head out to assignments. I'm going to go ahead and create an assignment right through here. Same as same as I always get to do with an assignment. All of the same features as the other one. I'm going to go ahead. I can I can click on the different features, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's let's go ahead and actually do that. So this is going to be a test assignment. I want this to show up on my calendar and I'm going to put that today so that I can go back and show you that it's there. I can set a particular time if I want to. Um, however many points, if you're using the grading system, I strongly encourage you to maybe start using the grading system in Canvas with the speed grader. It's, it's really, really amazing. Um, and it will talk right to Skyward because your classes are associated with Canvas and Skyward. So um, it could save you a lot of steps with grading. If you want more information, let me know. But if you do want to create an assignment and you want to be able to use it with Skyward, all you have to do is click this little button and that assignment will sync, will be able to sync right into Skyward. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save and publish this. But I'm going to come back here and I want to show you, um, I want to show you a couple of features all at the same time. <laughs> so now I have my assignment here. I'm going to go ahead and edit it. One of the things I want to do is I want to show you how you can use the new feature that is um, where you can use a PDF and you can make that interactable by a student. So let's go ahead. We have our assignment set up. My submission type. So I want my submission to be an external tool. And now I have different features available for this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go over here to find. I think maybe I should have. I think I clicked click the wrong one. Just a minute. Let's go back up here. I don't think it's an external tool. I think it is a online. I believe that's what it is. Okay. Yes. An online. So um, you need to select your online. And then when you look through, now you have a new feature in here. It's the student annotation. I'll go ahead and click on that. And now it's going to ask me where I want to upload that PDF. So this is for those, um, for those of you who have been wondering, how's an easy way to do a PDF for our students? So I'm going to go ahead and find one of these. I don't even know if I have anything on my, let's do this one. Don't have much, sorry, I should have pre-thought that through. So now I have that um, successfully uploaded. I have that associated in here. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on my save button. And now I have that assignment here for my students. Let's go ahead and let's look at the student view, what this looks like for them. Because assignments do look slightly different for students now, but notice how it automatically will open up this with the student annotation tool. So here's the PDF that I attached, and here are my tools. So now I can select, if I want to do a text box, I can select a text box with all those features in it, and I can start typing with the text box. I can use the highlighter if I want to highlight something. I have my highlighter tool. Um, if I want to, to write on something, I have that opportunity now to write on, um, strike through, etc. So these are interactive tools. And now once a student fills that in and they submit that assignment, you are going to see it with all of those interactive tools associated with that PDF. So they're going to go ahead and submit. And you get that. Yay! Or you can set it up now. Students have the option to do a new attempt. And one thing that didn't show up on here, because this is an annotation one and it will automatically open, but if it's a traditional assignment, um, it used to be a little confusing because the box, the students would have to click the submit assignment box to get started, no longer. Now it says start assignment. And so students will see that start assignment. They click that button and then they'll see the submit at the end of the assignment. So um, again, more user-friendly language for our younger learners. So I wanted to share that with you. Now, um, let me, I'm gonna pause and go back so I don't waste our time. Okay, and I just toggled over really quick, went back home, and um, and on the schedule, notice how when you click on the schedule, um, how I had how I had told you that there were these different features that show up. 
So it shows that it was submitted and it automatically checked the box off. Now, if this was one of those assignments that you had to go in and hand check because you were asking for them to turn in a paper assignment, then the student could come out here and they could check on this box. Well, it's supposed to be able to. Um, I'm not sure if maybe that's because it was already turned in. Anyway, there we go. So we mark it as complete and now that's taken care of for our students. So that's, um, that's kind of what that looks like when they have assignments. And then if they are wanting to find quick access to their assignments, now all they have to do is go into schedule. There's that assignment. If I click on this, it would take me right out to the assignment. So um, again, they're making things a lot easier for our students and ways to be able to use that. Let me go ahead and leave our student view. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up that assignment again in edit view because I wanted to show you, do you remember on the right hand side where there was that important date and I said that you as a teacher could control what goes there and what doesn't? At the bottom of an assignment that you put now in your Canvas for Elementary, um, right before you hit the save button, you're gonna notice mark as important date and show on homeroom sidebar. So if I want this assignment to show up over there, now I'm going to click that down below. And now that assignment is going to show up when I when I head back. So I'm going to go back home. Oops, wrong one. And now that I'm back home, you will notice that under important dates, now that assignment shows up here. And this is so from this homeroom page, if you put important dates here and you put these subjects on here, um, I love now how it puts the date, but this is also how a student doesn't have to go anywhere else. They could they could go to their schedule, but they could also just come right here. And if they click on this, it's going to open that assignment up immediately. So it's a really super quick and easy way to access content that you want to have access um, just just on an immediate basis. So as part of your strategies, if you're thinking through, okay, maybe if I want to use Canvas in a different way at school than at home, but I can make a flip pretty easy, I could just put all of my assignments with important dates and put them over here. And students never have to navigate anywhere else. They can just come over here and I can tell them, okay, I want you to first of all, go over to um, your important dates. I want you to click on this assignment and let's work on that together right now. So anyway, just, just some more thoughts about how you might be able to, to use this tool. So um, those, those are the basics and those are the main things I wanted to share with you. I know when you start playing around, you're gonna find some more things that are gonna be helpful to you, but I think that's enough information to get started. If you have questions, please reach out to me. And um, certainly if you find different things that you want to share, please let me know because I'm gonna start sending out a weekly newsletter that says, hey, here's some important updates. Here's some important information about Canvas for Elementary. And I would love to include your finds in there or if you have some great ideas that come your way. Thanks so much for your time and enjoy Canvas for Elementary.